What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So we are going to take a look and a listen to Mr. Uh, Pasquarell. He's going to be talking about Social Security reform. So a Social Security increase, Social Security reform. He's going to be talking about the Social Security 2100 Act. Now, we've talked about this before on this channel. I want to continue talking about this because I think it's important to share the information. And I think it's important for us to listen to these politicians that are talking about an enhancement to Social Security. And I think the main reason for this, and I've had some people in the comments, every time I post a video about Social Security, especially if it's a video about uh, Social Security reform, I have people in the comments, just, just a few, not a lot. Most of you guys are very supportive of an increase for Social Security. You're very supportive of Social Security reform. You're hoping that Congress actually moves forward with some type of uh, Social Security reform. However, you do have some people that will say, well, they talk about this all the time, but there's no action. You know, I'll believe it when I see it and, and, and all that. The fact that they're actually talking about Social Security reform and you have these representatives and Representative Larson, we're going to be listening to Representative Press Grill. They talk a lot about this. The fact that they're talking about this is good. It's a good sign because they could easily be talking about a variety of different issues, but they're choosing to talk about social security reform. And they know that in 10 years, the trust fund will run empty. And so that would mean a 23% cut for people receiving social security benefits. That's going to impact people who are currently receiving benefits, but it's also going to impact those people who want to retire. Gen Xers that are thinking in 10 years, you know what, maybe I'll be able to retire. But you might not be able to retire if you have a 23% cut in your benefits, your Social Security benefits, because you'll take your 401k or your pension or whatever you're bringing to the table, you'll bring that as well as you're going to be looking forward, most of us will be looking forward to receiving something when it comes to Social Security benefits. And if it's a 23% cut, that might mean that you need to work a little bit longer because you're not going to have the funds that you thought you would have. And so it's very important that these politicians are talking about this and we want them to talk about it. And eventually we want them to move forward with social security reform, but we want them to make the right decisions. We don't want them just to get out there and say, well, let's just do this and this. Let's raise a full retirement age here and let's make a cut here, and make a cut there. We don't want that type of a solution. We want to promote the solutions that will benefit the people who are receiving Social Security the most. And right now, the Social Security 2100 Act is probably the best option, universal option. And the reason why I say that is because you have Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders has been pushing for a $200 raise for Social Security. That's good. However, it doesn't have bipartisan support. At least the Social Security 2100 Act you do have some Republicans that are open to the Social Security 2100 Act. Whereas when it comes to Bernie Sanders' plan, you're not really seeing that. And, you know, I hate to say Democrats and Republicans, you know, kind of, you know, pitting them against each other. But when it comes to Social Security reform, you have two different ideas there. You have one idea. Republicans talk more about privatizing Social Security. They also talk about raising the full retirement age to 70 or to 69. Democrats aren't talking about that. They're talking about the payroll tax, raising the cap, and people who are currently working maybe have across the board uh, tax, you know, raise the tax, uh, the payroll tax. Not a lot, we're talking about maybe 1%. And so right now you're paying 6.2%, your employer's paying 6.2%, raise that to 7.2%, and then your employer pays 7.2%. And that would give you some revenue, more revenue, to go to the Social Security Administration to help with enhancing the program. And so in this video, we're going to take a look and listen to Representative Pascarell. And I want to talk to you guys about a personal story that I have when it comes to Social Security. I'll talk about that at the end of this video. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime you post a video. We do daily videos here, so by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And just a reminder, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter and threads, you can at 
the TEC show live. Okay, and I wanna say one more thank you, and I'm gonna show you guys these stats on the screen, but every week I get a notification from YouTube. I'm gonna start sharing these notifications with you guys so you guys can kind of see the progress. So as far as the videos that I posted last week, I received 6,608 likes, 697 shares, and 939 comments. So I really appreciate that. From the bottom of my heart, I'm glad that you guys are sharing the video, you guys are commenting, you guys are liking the video. All that stuff does help get the word out, and, and I, I really appreciate it. So I think every week I am going to give you guys kind of a behind the scenes what's going on as far as is the likes and the shares and all of that. And hopefully every week we'll see this moving up. So let I wanna show you Representative Prasquerel. We'll, we'll take a look and a listen to him and then we'll talk a little bit about my personal journey when it comes to social security. Here we go. Mr. Speaker, I rise today with my brothers and sisters on behalf of more than 124,000 of my constituents in North Jersey in the Ninth District, they rely on Social Security each and every month. They rely on it. To some, as in the entire country, that's their only means of income, of survival. That's how Social Security was established in the 30s, implemented a few years later. Social Security is one of America's greatest success stories. I remember the first time I ran for Congress in 1996. I walked into a room prepared to deal with the housing codes and public housing. But the only questions folks asked me, where do you stand on Social Security? Do you want to privatize Social Security? Social Security is a success story. 90 years, it stands as a monument to decency and dignity and the birthright of hard-working Americans. Yet, throughout its storied history, Mr. Larson, it has been under attack. Even in 1935, it has been the subject of attacks and lies from day one. The Republican Study Committee which represents three quarters of House Republicans, proposed slashing Social Security benefits by $718 billion. The GOP leadership wants to create a so-called fiscal commission in our government funding bill. That is a wolf in sheep's clothing. I'm proud to join my friend and friends and my friend Congressman John Larson in a letter opposing this cynical ploy to sla slash Social Security and Medicare. Without aggressive action, Social Security lurches toward insolvency. Congress has a sacred responsibility for fight to fight for its future. Same question asked 25, 26 years ago is asked of me today. That is why I'm standing with Mr. Larson on his Social Security 2100 Act to assure the long-term strength and solvency of Social Security. Social Security 2100 Act provides paid-for benefit enhancements while not raising taxes on middle-class families. It's a no-brainer. Our bill ends the painful five-month disability waiting period who can justify that in this day and age? It would ensure Americans suffering with permanent disorders like Huntington's disease, they get the help they need without red tape or delay. The bill eliminates the windfall elimination provision so that firefighters, police officers, teachers, and others get the full benefits that they have earned. While the Social Security 2100 Act, we are fighting for our seniors who have worked their entire lives and rely on Social Security to make ends meet. 
We're fighting for working families so that no one who pays into the system over a lifetime ever retires in poverty. We must get this done for the American people, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker. There's no excuses. I thank you, and I yield back. Okay, so that was Representative Prasquerel talking about the Social Security 2100 Act, and he's showing his support for Representative Larson's uh, bill. Now, hopefully we'll see some action in the, in the very near future when it comes to Social Security 2100 Act. All I want, I just want it to be brought to the floor. If it's not brought to the floor in the House, bring it to the floor in the Senate, let them vote on it, and then we can really see where politicians are when it comes to reforming Social Security and enhancing Social Security. Okay, so I want to talk about the windfall elimination provision. He talked a little bit about that. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because this impacts people who receive a pension. And so in my situation, I'm receiving a pension. And when I was working, I was paying into the pension only. I wasn't paying into Social Security. However, prior to paying into that pension, so the last job that I had, I was paying into Social Security. So for five years, I was paying into Social Security. And so now I need another five years in order to receive some Social Security benefits. However, because I'm receiving a pension, even if I work that five years, which I plan to do, I, I have my own business, so I'm, I'm paying into it right now. And if I do it for another five years, which I have every intention to continue my business for another five years, well, I'm paying into the payroll tax, but there's going to be a deduction from my social security benefits when I go to collect because I'm receiving a pension. And so that's the issue that firefighters are having, uh, police officers, as well as teachers, people who are paying in. And I think you have to pay into your pension only and not pay anything into social security. But a lot of us, we have other jobs where we, we worked before we got uh, the job where we were paying into a pension. Or uh, like so if you're a teacher, you might be working over over the summers or your, your time off and things like that. Firefighters have a lot, I won't say they have a lot of free time, but they work like a 24 hour shift. So they might have like five days off and a few of those days they might do some other things, some other type of work. And so with Representative Larson's plan, he wants to do away with the windfall elimination provision. So that's, that's part of it. Now there are, when we're looking at the windfall elimination provision, the reason why it's in place is because Let's say I'm working a job, I'm receiving a pension, and then I start working another job and I start paying into Social Security. Well, the Social Security Administration, they're, they're doing the calculations. Let's say they see 10 years of work from me. So they see 10 years of work, and so they're doing the calculations for the 35 years, so they're taking my 10 years in, but they don't know about the fact that I'm receiving a pension. And so when they're looking at my income, my income will be very low, which means that I would get a boost when it comes to my social security benefits. Whereas if they knew that I was receiving a pension and now the now they're, they're sharing the information more. So this whole windfall elimination provision is probably, they're, they're not going to need it in the future. But right now it's necessary because this information is not being shared. But the bottom line is if you are receiving a pension, you could be in a situation where you're going to see reduced benefits, social security benefits as a result of that. Because what what's on paper, what it looks like is you only worked 10 years and you didn't, you didn't have any other jobs. And so you would receive a, a, a higher amount of social security benefits. It's not gonna be that much, but you would still receive a little bit of a bump because of that, because they're looking at the 35 years and they're kind of calculating everything in. And the reality is you have another retirement plan, this pension, and so you're doing better, you're better off than a person who only has 10 years of work history and they don't have that pension. And so that's why they have the windfall elimination uh, provision uh, and the, I can't remember the name of the other provision. I'll put it on the screen, but that is the situation that we're in right now. Social Security 2100 Act, they're talking about doing away with that. And so, I mean, there's pros and cons on both sides when it comes to windfall elimination provision but um, we'll have to see what they do with that. But I just wanted to kind of share my personal story because at this point, I've worked five years, I can work another five years, which I will, 
paying the social security, but then see reduced benefits when it comes time for me to start collecting social security benefits. And so I wanna know what you guys think about social security 2100 act, what you guys think about a social security increase and the reform for social security that we should see hopefully in the very near future. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.